Hey guys, welcome back to the Summer of Knives 2017. This is the Bowie edition. If you're like me and you have grown up to love knives, uh, then you do realize that the Bowie knife is something you probably have to have in your collection or have multiples in your collection. Now you can't go to a knife store, online store, in any store, any shape or form here in America or in the UK or in Europe and not know who Jim Bowie or James Bowie is. Traditionally, Jim Bowie, uh, they call him Colonel, uh, probably uh, more famous, but the fight at the Alamo was not this guy's first fight. He was a man of good faith. Um, he was politically driven. He was a brawler. And I think one of the stories about him was uh, he wound up... Um, Somebody was spreading negative rumors about him, a colonel, or uh, I'm sorry, a southern gentleman was spreading nasty rumors about him. He jumped on a train, went over there, accused the guy. The guy got up and um, shot him. Now, he grazed Bowie, but Bowie was unarmed at the time. So from that time forward, uh, he always decided to carry a knife, his Bowie knife. Now... I'm not talking about the sandbar incident. If you guys are interested in the sandbar duel, there's a guy on YouTube called Fat River, P H A T R I V E R, that will explain to you what happened at the sandbar. At that sandbar, it was two southern gentlemen uh, of their own right, and they decided to have a duel. The duel, they missed each other, nobody got hurt, and then shit turned ugly. And once the two parties that hated each other fueled into something more, Bowie was attacked by multiple men. Uh, he was shot twice and stabbed about seven times. But he killed his attacker. He killed one attacker and, and wounded another. So, and he lived, which was the most amazing part of the story. And that sandbar incident was met what made him... Um, who he was, his reputation for fighting to the end, to the absolute end when, when uh, outnumbered. That reputation carried with him a very long time and of course he was politically connected which was great and he fought at the Alamo Wars. What you have to understand is that the knife that he was created, that he had created, was nothing that you see on the table. I have a historic version of the Bowie knife right here. The ideal length, and this was written by his brother Riesling, uh, I hope I said that right. His brother decided to make the Bowie knife, but he his definition of what the Bowie knife was, or the one that James carried at the time, was a nine and a half, a nine and a half inch blade. It was a quarter of an inch thick. It was an inch and a half wide, and it had no curve. It had no guard. It was just a plain hunting knife. The handle scales were made. Uh, probably by oak and it had three copper rivets that's it that's actually the Bowie knife it doesn't really go into what the sheath was made out of we don't know uh, historically there wasn't many guards that were made now after this fight after Jim Bowie uh, after the Alamo um, they started producing American made Bowie knives sort of like what you see up here and ideally, what this is called is a Texas clip. Now, Jim Bowie was, I'm not really sure where he's from, but you got to understand about the time period in the 1800s where there was a strong Mexican uh, influence uh, from Texas. Texas was fighting for its own uh, state. Louisiana, Arkansas, those kind of states, they were all southern gentlemen, and they were fighting for this one cause was to you know take Texas and and to not have the Mexican influence now like I said this is a very general knife that we as Americans got popularized and Shetfield and all these other companies started making these knives with the traditional Bowie clip so some of the references that I have and these books are, are all available on Amazon is the Bowie knife unsheathed in American legend by Norm uh, Faderman Randall's Military Models by Robert H. Hunt and of course good Billy Bagwell Bowie's Big Knives 
and the Battle of Big Blades. Now those three books right there, you can find them on Amazon, but I know you guys are really here for the knives. So I'm going to get into the blades. Now the blades that you're going to see here, I purchased all myself. I purchased them over a long extent amount of time. I didn't just go out to the store and buy them just for this video. So what you have to understand, again, is that this is an extension of my own likes and needs. If there is a knife out there that you've already seen or that you purchased yourself, great. That's not me. This is what I have. Uh, you're going to see a lot of influences on these knives. I want to start with the Gil Hibben. Now the Gil Hibben knife is basically a collector's piece. I think he made this, uh, it comes with a sheath. I think this knife was made basically for a collector's piece. It is one of the largest Bowie knives that I've ever seen and that's, pro that's why I got it. This one's made out of Damascus. I would, have, I would have preferred it just to be regular steel but it's made and if you don't know who Gil Hibben is, he makes a lot of knives that are typically uh, like a fantasy type knife okay so I'm not taking this out anywhere this is a collector's piece it's a wall hanger that's why most of these will still have the box this is a big 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 blade comes with a certificate of authenticity the old west style um, right there Bowie knife limited Damascus edition I thought it was cool I had the money for it so I purchased it a while ago and I think he made one of these for um, Texas Rangers or something like that that's why it has the star on there and I don't know what his thoughts were but it's pretty cool so I purchased it and I keep it in the box uh, I'm gonna take this off the table because all these knives are huge so the idea behind the buoy again it's got to be nine plus inches about a quarter of an inch thick there's a lot of cold steel options here and a lot of other influences that the Americans picked up after time and time again so Let's check this out for instance. This is the Down Under Buoy. Uh, they don't call it the Buoy, but if you've ever seen Crocodile Dundee, this is a Buoy influence. All right, Now, it doesn't have the cross guard or anything, but this is a quarter of an inch thick. And like I said, this is called the Texas Clip. It's not exactly a Buoy knife, but uh, throughout uh, the 1800s and the late 1800s, these knives became very popular. And of course, if you're a salesman, you're definitely going to create these knives and try to sell it to all the western frontiers that you can specifically because they are being bought up as fast as possible so this one right here is the down under outback very very large knife uh, it's brand new in the box I keep it in the box I try not to use it too much uh, this is supposed to be alligator skin I don't know if that's true you can usually find these on Amazon or the, such places where it's about 200 ish dollars does come with a sharpening steel all right has some funky uh, alligator teeth on there or something on there I don't know what that is but most likely if you are looking for Bowie you're gonna look at cold steel now this is cold steels Natchez Bowie Natchez Bowie is where the sandbar fight happened okay so if you want to again um, check out how that happened and or, or read the history you're more than welcome to just look it up on YouTube you don't have to even read this Natchez buoy I purchased again quarter of an inch steel this does have a clip that is sharp um, has a guard on it and that's one of the things if I didn't mention it before the buoy knives did not have sh uh, guards at that time this comes with a, a nice secure X sheath rosewood handles brass embellishments really really nice uh, the other one that Cold Steel makes, this is the Laredo buoy, and I almost like this one better, but it has a large clip point, a very large knife, it's a little bit lighter, again, brass embellishments, some rosewood handles, these are stick tang knives, so I wouldn't be going bashing wood with these things, alright, this is not a wood basher or a carver, this is specifically a fighting knife. Uh, over here you can see that this does have a leather sheath and this is uh, I forget what they call this notch but this is just so you can slip it into your belt like that and it's more likely a cross draw type knife okay that's what you get with Cold Steel's Laredo buoy now speaking of Cold Steel I have a bunch of them up here uh, this is another one I don't know the name of this 
but this is a honking beast. Uh, I think the idea behind this one is all kinds of you know all kinds of fighting if you wanted to it does have a squared handle with wooden uh, scales on it this is cold steels it's not that expensive I think they might call this the pioneer buoy or something like that uh, it does have the large blood groove it does have that shiny coating on it really nice guard I mean this guard this is typically a really large fighting knife it's almost like a pirate's knife um, the uh, sheath itself is leather. It does come with this metal piece on the end so the knife doesn't slip all the way through. It is a friction knife so it's just going to sit there friction and it does come with a dangling belt loop. I think ideally if you fought someone with this knife or any other knives you would probably scare the hell out of them. Alright, uh, this one is the one that I have from Condor. This is Condor's version of its buoy. It's made with a PVC handle. Uh, it does have the large bowie clip, but this is more of a wood processor knife. And I think what happens is the whole fighting knife concept is great, but I don't know how many knife fighters we have here in 2017. I think it's very rare. I don't think that uh, most states will not allow you to carry something this big. So you really got to understand in the 1800s um, and in late, you know, early 1900s, the pistols were flintlock pistols. So they were not really accurate up in, you know, maybe like 10 yards max. They weren't that accurate. There was no rifling. It was just ball and cap. So having a large blade or a sword cane is probably your best option. Is probably your best option for protection. Okay. There are some states that did go ahead and outlaw it after a time, but you know, this this was the option. All right, so this is one of my favorites, Cold Steel Trailmaster. Now this is made for wood processing. It's almost 5 16 inch thick. There are many videos on this and again has that nice buoy clip design. It does have a guard, has a rubber rubberized handle, craton handle, has a lanyard hole. And you can see how far the uh, buoy knife has changed. Again, American style, you can sharpen the clip up top if you like. This also comes in a secure X sheath and has a little bit of friction. Really, really nice blade. I, I have three of these. That's how much I love these trail masters. I have the one that you saw in the other video that was completely beat up. I have this one and I have one just for storage or to put it away. That's how much I love these these trail masters. To each his own. All right. Um, this is Falk Neven. And this is one of the series called Tor. This was the series knife that you would see. I think they make, uh, you probably saw the other one I have, but they, they have four or five of these knives and they call them different Norse god names. Okay, you can see it right there. Tor, I believe it is. Um, this is, I believe, a laminated VG10 leather stack handle. It does have the guard and, of course, the buoy clip. This knife is extremely expensive, and I, you know, a lot of people don't like spending four or five hundred dollars on a knife. I understand that. This is a production-made knife. It is not a handmade knife. Um, and of course, I make something similar, and I'll show you that in a minute. But you won't go wrong with any of these knives that are on the table. So that's all the way from Sweden that they're making buoy knives. Okay, really nice thick leather sheath. Okay. Heavy duty knife, it has a leg wrap if you want to tie it to your leg. Can't leave my Bark River out. I love me Bark River. Okay, so you guys know that I'm a freak when it comes to Bark River knives. I think they're very beautifully made. I think they're made well and ultimate bush knives, of course. Thicker than a quarter of an inch thick. This is the Bravo 3. I usually carry the Bravo 2 or the Grasso 2. Like I said, there are different versions and different lengths. This is a big, heavy, weight, weight forward knife. It has the um, typical Bark River grind on there, which is the convex. It has the finger choil up here. And it has the micarta scales, of course, with the strap and the lanyard loop. This is a really good knife. This one is made out of CPM3V. You can see that right there. And it does have the typical buoy clip. Very, very large knife, heavy forward edge. So if you want to do a lot of processing, you can. It's basically a mini machete or mini sword at this point. 
The only thing I don't like about Bark River, and I know they do this because they do it on all their knives, is that this handle is very, very slick, which uh, you got to be extremely careful about if you're swinging this thing really heavy and hard. Comes with a great leather sheath with a fire steel. And again, this is probably going to be a collector's piece. I know what a lot of people do here on this sheath is, of course, it has these holes or, um, see right through, eyelets. And they'll attach like what they call a uh, parasite knife or a smaller knife to the sheet. So you have two knives on one sheet. Teaches on, I reckon. Alright, so let's get into some of the more affordable options because all these blades right here are extremely expensive. Um, this I brought out before is the Ontario buoy. It is the Spec Plus Raider buoy. And you'll see this on a lot of... I would say Marine Corps, infantryman, soldier type knife. It's a very big fighting chopping knife, all right? It's, it's very affordable. It's probably about 60 bucks. Um, you can get them on Amazon, quarter of an inch thick. It does have the Texas clip on it. It does have a very stout guard, as you can see there. Nice rubber handle, craton handle, lanyard loop. The only thing I don't like about this knife is the sheath. The sheath is that cardboard covered, um, Actually, insert cardboard insert with some type of cheap Condora. The problem with these things is once they get wet, they're absolute garbage. And if you're going in the woods to use it as a chopper, it's going to get wet. Okay, it's just that simple. Going back to cold steel again is the Marauder. I don't think you can get any more fighting knife than this. This Marauder is, um, if I had to say, it was it. It's a very large buoy clip. The only difference is that this fighting knife style, this is a fighting knife style where you have the uh, the guard up top and then the finger loop at the bottom. So it's supposed to give you more maneuverability and give you a lot more protection. The problem is, is that this is plastic. It's not metal. So the fighter style buoy uh, is a cool design and this thing is very, very lightweight compared to all the others and uh, really cool knife it comes with a secure X sheath which I'm a big fan of and relatively inexpensive you can definitely buy this on Amazon for about 60 bucks something like that let's talk about tops because you know I love me tops too this is the Prather War buoy again you can see very traditional designs you can see it has this nice clip Again, this is the American style buoy, not the traditional or accurate, I should say, historically accurate design. Uh, it does have some jimping on top, Rocky Mountain tread, uh, excellent small bladed knife, and it's really a fun knife because what I like about it is it's not as big as the others. It's a lot easier to carry. It probably won't give you as much chopping as some of the other bigger, heavier knives. But again, this is not a wood processor. This is a knife that you stick into bad guys and protect your life with. All right, that's what this is for, to protect yourself. So that being said, uh, I designed my own Bowie knife because if you didn't know, I am a knife maker if you missed the intro. And this is what I call my wilderness Bowie. Okay, if you've seen this knife before in other videos, you understand the design. The design is a quarter of an inch thick. It does not have a guard. It does have the traditional, or I should say, American style clip. Uh, this is a one. No, it's a 52-100 ball bearing steel. So it, if you want to, I can blue it for you. It does have a finger choil, and most all these blades will come with a um, saber grind. The materials on the handle will either be a wood or they will be some type of micarta or G10. You can pick it out on the website. The leather sheath itself I did not make. It will come with a Kydex sheath. The leather sheath, uh, my leather sheath guy that I work with is Harper Leathers. You can go to the website 3riverblades.com and order this knife. And if you want a leather sheath, you can click on his link and explain to him that you purchased a knife from me and he will make you a sheath. Now, I will say that this knife typically is made for the woods. Uh, you can use it as a self-defense knife. I hope that you would never have to hurt anybody um, with my knives, but ideally, if you have to defend yourself, you have to do what you have to do. Um, 
I think that the Bowie knife in its design, its design concept will never go away. I'm pretty sure that out of all these blades right here, any one of them will do fine uh, in a knife fight or self-protection act. Uh, I think a lot of them are wall hangers in my own opinion. There are a lot of blades here that I probably would not take out to the woods just because you paid top dollar for them and you want to kind of preserve them and keep them uh, nice and clean. But again, to each his own. Like I said, I own three of the uh, I own three of the Trailmasters, and I love these knives. I really do. I'm a big fan of the Trailmasters. So, again, to each his own. So, I hope you appreciate this video on the uh, the Bowie knife. Stay tuned for more videos. And if you guys are interested, please go up to ThreeRiverBlades.com. Support the channel. Support myself and my family. I appreciate it. Thank you very much and stay safe out there guys.